from Hot 104.1 and 96.3, the Lou Operations Manager, Program Director. I do afternoon drive on Hot 104.1 from 3 to 7. I do the topic of the day at 3 p.m., all right? I'm finally going to be sitting in that barber's chair with Chop Talk TV. Yeah, not a lot of chopping going to be happening with me, but a lot for us to talk about. It's a beautiful Chop Talk TV, this ain't that. Y'all know this big business, man. We ain't keeping no school, man. We in the building. It's exclusive, man. Got my big brother in here, man. D Green 104.1. Yeah. What's up, big dog? What's up, big business? You already know the deal, man. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here, man. And, uh, you know, chopping it up with Chop Talk TV, man. This is real deal, you know? Man, I appreciate it, man. We definitely been grinding hard, working, man. And, uh... Like I say, it's just, it's starting to pay off a little bit now, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Connecting with the, you know, alumni, the big dogs in the city. You know, you got to brush shoulders, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I appreciate it, man. Yeah, no doubt, man. No how, doubt. How your 20 or uh, 21 been going so far? Man? man, so far, so good. You know, uh, things are opening back up, which uh, means the radio station is uh, back out in the streets a little bit more than we were, and uh, which is, is good for us. You know, it's, it's hard to... Um, operate a radio station and not be in the community and not serve in the community for real, you know? Right, right, right. How did your uh, 2020 go? Because, you know, everybody had some look crazy, so I always ask everybody, like, man, how was your 2020? Because 2020 was like that old dun 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 <laughs> year. Everybody just had something to say about 2020. Man. But, you know, it wasn't really that bad uh, with the exception of just being locked down. Like, you know, when you're an active person like myself and you like to right. get out and, and you're a real extrovert, it's hard, man, to, 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 to lock things down, be in the house. It's hard to, you know, not be able to come to the radio station. You're doing everything from, right. from the house. Like, everything it's right. hard to not shrug shoulders with people, not go to events, not have events, not have concerts, not have galas. Like, all of that stuff, man. Right. You know, when you take that away from us, we become, uh, <laughs> right. we become a different human being, man. Right. You know, that's why people were angry as hell, I think, you right. know. What did you do mostly on the lockdown, man? Um, How you was uh, spending Man, you know what, man? I studied a lot. I read a lot. I, um, you know, I tried to, I tried to, I tried to glow up. You know what I mean? I tried to come out of the pandemic a little bit better than I went in there. You know, financially, right. mentally, and then you know, just honing my craft, man. Just doing this radio thing, and, right. and then also, you know, getting to know St. Louis a little bit better. You right, know, right, right, right. Where you from, uh, there? So I, so I, I grew up originally, man. I'm originally from Orlando. I grew up in in Huntsville, in the Huntsville, uh, Alabama area. Okay, and uh, right. went to high school and college there. Uh, I've done radio in, in Mississippi, Jackson, Mississippi, Memphis, Birmingham, Huntsville, Nashville. And I ran a region of radio stations uh, in the Atlanta region for iHeart before I came to St. Louis. So I ran 19 right. radio stations before I came to St. Louis. Oh, that's dope. That's dope, man. How you get in radio? Like, what, was, what made you get into radio? I'm a lifer, man. I'm a lifer. I'm a junkie. Yeah. So, like, straight up, like, I was the little kid at 9, 10 years old. Used to ask my mom, like, yo, take me to the car dealership. I want to meet the DJ. Uh, you know, I'm okay, that dude. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm that dude, like, you know, used to call the request line. I, I couldn't wait till I got home from school. I used oh, to call yeah. the request line at the <laughs> radio yeah. station. I know they used to get tired of me because I think about it now as right. I'm a jock on the air. Right. I'm like, yo, man, I, I was probably a pester, pest yeah. little ass boy, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So but it was cool, you know what I'm saying? You manifested it, though, you feel yeah. me? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah so right. so at, at 12, I asked mom and dad, you know what I'm saying, to give me some turntables. Uh, at, at 13, I was I was DJing at my high school. I'm in my middle school uh, uh, homecoming dance, and uh, I started like really doing some gigs and DJing here and there, and kind of did that all the way through high school, all the way through college. That was like my income in college was DJing. With DJing. And uh, so I just the made turntables and all turntables and all, and all man. You know what I'm saying? So I, I made it a whole career. Uh, my mom, I remember my mom said, hey, you know what, Derek, you know, you, you going into engineering. Mm -hmm. I was like, 
engineering. I'm going into mass communication. I want to do radio. Yeah, my mom was yeah. like, no, you're not. You know what I'm saying? But I changed my major on her, though. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Got, got in a little trouble for doing that. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think it all paid off. You know what I'm saying? And I think, you know, and I think she feels like it all paid off as well. You got to follow your passion and not what your parents want to do for you. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what I feel. You got to follow yeah. your passion, man. You, you can't know. just do what mom wants you to do or what dad wants you to do. And I think a lot of people uh, actually do that in the beginning. They yeah. kind of just, uh, this is what my mom and them want me to do. And then after a while, when they start finding their way, they kind of switch it up a little That's bit right. and start getting, you know, when you find yourself in comfortable and confidence and all that build up, then, you know, you kind of, you find your path in life. You know that's it, man. And, and that's a big thing, man. So, you know, if you if you out here, you got a passion for something, you need to follow your lead on that. And don't let no one else kind of take you out of the game from where you, you know what I mean? Where you where you really want to be. Like, you know, I, I remember uh, working at, working with my best friend when I was 16 at Hardee's. And that was yeah. it, man. Once, once I, once, once I got to Hardee's, and I, and I was in there uh, hooking them biscuits up in the morning, yeah. I, I realized that I needed to really follow my passion. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So I've been doing radio since then. That's, that's it. That's they that see. That's and that's dope, bro. They've been in in that field for so long, and you and you good at. It. You can even tell by your voice when you speak. You could just. It's prominent, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. strong, so people you. listen, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. you kind of you kind of peep that, man. Yeah. How do you take that uh that kind of fame a little bit when people see you or like recognize who you is, man? Like all yeah. oh, that D Green right there, man. You like, know what, man? You know what? Being real, man. It's it's um, like your I, your your voice more famous than like yeah. your, your face, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I, I mean, your there, voice. there are times, man, where I'm, I'm at the uh, cash register and the and the and the, and the you know the cash register lady recognizes my voice. She said, oh, you the guy from the radio station. Right. That, that kind of stuff happens. But man, I've been in this game so long, man. I'm so humbled by this thing, man. Like, right. Right. you know, I always feel like radio, radio is fair. Like, it's so fair. Like, what you give it, it'll give back to you. So, like, being right. humble is, is like, you know, you, you gotta understand, man, that tomorrow ain't promised to any of us in this business. So you got to come in here and act as if, hey, look, man. Today the last today day. Today is the last, the very last day that I'm going to be doing this. So I, I knock it out of the park every day when I come to work. I'm, I'm, I feel blessed and honored to be able to do this for a living. Right. But I promise you, man, mm -hmm. I'm humble as it gets. That's why, you know, I, I let Kat, I, I know in the past here, people weren't probably able to, um, I would say, meet the program director and deal with the program director, right. let me say this. I'm talking to everybody. And a lot of cats on my in, in, that are in my inbox are recognizing it. They saying, damn, dude, return my message. Yeah, look, <laughs> man, this is, this is everyday life for me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I do this. And then uh, I say this to all the artists that send me, your, send me their music. I listen to every piece of music that comes to my inbox. And that's what's up. You know, yeah. I might not listen to it right there at that moment, yeah. but I'm listening to you every check piece it out. of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and that's dope, bro. That's that's because you get some people that do get up on that high horse and they forget about when they was the ones shooting the music to the directors and the, the DJs and the strip clubs. You know what I'm saying? But so yeah. for you to really go back and listen to it, because you you might find something and be like, hey, this one hurt. You got the sauce. Like, yeah, you know, you know, you, know, you the, they come they come across your desk, and then you know sometimes it's just guidance. One thing that I've recognized with moving to St. Louis as opposed to living in Georgia for those years. Right. Is the guidance, man. The, the education of the music business is a little different here. Right. In, in Georgia, it's seen that, you know, if if you got on or you got offered, say, a 360 record deal, uh -huh. your cousin or your uncle or your, your friend or somebody was involved in the business, and they, they basically could, uh, you know, give you some pointers and some education on what you need to do from that instance. Now, I, I moved to St. Louis, and I've noticed that that's one knock that I have on the artists. Mm. They don't really know the business that way. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm saying? Yeah. You know they don't, they, you know, and, and it, it's no one's fault. It's just that there hasn't been yeah. any type of person who could actually tell them, you know, hey, look. You know, signing this deal. A, B, C, D, this high. Right, right, right. Signing this deal is going to do this. You might need to negotiate this in your deal. You might need to negotiate that in your contract. I was saying dudes was here with signing for zero dollars, 
couple hundred. I mean, I didn't heard some crazy stories about brothers being signed to St. Louis, and we truly do have a lot of talent. I mean, some oh, I really mean, you know, good talent. I, I, I'll, I'll step out on the ledge and say this. The talent and, and the hunger here is far more than it is in Georgia. Far more. And, and for someone who lived in Georgia over 13 years, no one can tell me any different because I dealt with the artists there. And I've heard artists, I've heard music, I've heard music here that uh, in, in three years that I didn't hear in 13 years in Georgia. I, I, wow. I mean, some really, some really, uh, some of the artists here are so gifted and talented, they don't even know that they're that gifted and talented. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, getting back to the business of it, you know, um, there are people who are putting themselves in bad situations here, signing signing with people early or doing side deals with people early, and then when the big money come along, they already have put themselves in a bad position. Uh, being in a rush. Right, right. Being in a rush. You know, so you know. With that being said, I look forward to like 2022. 2022. Uh, this has not been announced, uh, so so. You know, Chop Talk TV getting this early. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We we're we're looking at doing a a, a music conference here. Okay. Uh, all out music conference. Uh, we're gonna pull in eight to ten record uh, record companies, okay. and we're gonna we're gonna have panels that talk business, that talk lawyers, that talk streaming. Oh, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna teach sure. we're gonna teach the artist here how to get that bag. How you know what I'm saying? Get that bag, right? Yeah. You know, I, I, the, the the talent is here. They just don't know how to get it. You know, right. I, I cannot tell you how many artists come, they, they bring their records to me, but That's and the it. record's dope, but but the record's not registered. It's not they're, they're not they're not BMI, they're not ASCAP, they're not CSAP. Then they're then they're not they're not they're not BDS, they're not media based, they're not even they're, they're not even fingerprinted. Man, I I so many I tell these young dudes the same thing when they come to me and ask me questions and I be running that and they actually look at me and be like, What you talking about? And I be like, Look, bro, you just dropped the video on YouTube and now you just waiting. Like it's bigger than that, bro. It's it's something you can always be doing, you know, for as a marketing and the, you know the instagram but like you say the bmi the ascap all that stuff you know and that yeah. way when you do go to people people can't fuck you over see when that, you got that it. stuff up then somebody gonna look at you a little different like okay i can't just run the, any but when i see you don't got none of that oh yeah I'm finna oh man grease you on up oh, <laughs> man, you know what i mean every time and and that's what i think artists need to understand it is it's this is a business. It's about ten percent talent and ninety percent business. This is about business. And 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 you know, I I, I referenced this back to a, a, a earlier interview I had about where a a female was getting um she was um a guy a guy approached her and tried to, you know, get with her mm -hmm. saying that he, you know, he you know, he had a radio station, blah 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 and he could help her get on. Like like, you know, when you educate it, when you know the business, those things can't happen. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. And, and listen, I'm telling you, no, not one record rep is trying to get in your pants. They trying to get in, they trying to get in your pockets. In your pockets. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They trying to get to the money. And that's the whole thing. They just trying to get to the money. And and this is this is and we all are. This is a business. I'm in a business. Radio is a business. Right. And, and and I I, I don't this is where a lot of art, local artists don't get where the radio station come in. Oh yeah, we can play your record, but is your record a banger like that? Is your are they gonna punch out when your record come on? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Is uh, I mean, let's just be real. Uh, do they want to hear your record more than they want to hear Silk Sonic and Bruno Mars? Exactly. Right. <laughs> can I play your record beside and behind Bruno Mars? Is it the same quality? Have you got your stuff mixed and mastered? Right. Uh, you know, oh. once again, is it fingerprinted? Have you done everything that you're supposed to do on your business end for me to play your song on the radio? You know, everybody come to me, and, you got to play my song, man. I got the hottest song. I, you know, I need this, this shit hot. Yo, right. Hey, man, hey. <laughs> right. Everybody yeah. think they baby pretty, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So, <laughs> right, absolutely. No, I so, get you it. know, yeah. you got to know that, and, you know, know that going in. People think they baby pretty, and, and you think your baby pretty, and I respect that. Right. But yo, is your business handled right? Uh, it's a B.M. production.